Yeah, very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the 13th edition of Vogan's Global Weather and Climate Report. This is the view over the Trinity River or, um, you know, what uh, appears to be a bridge over a stream of water in Dallas, Texas. Of course, it has been an extremely dry and hot summer so far, but things have changed in recent times. And this was the comparison, uh, you know, within an 18 hour period. Um, we've seen the Trinity River all of a sudden become a, a vast waterway um, across um, the center of Dallas, Texas. Now, that was in a, a region, of course, that has been hit by drought conditions this summer. This is the view from uh, uh, Brighton during the overnight last night. Of course, thunderstorms riding northwards out of France over the Channel and into the southeast of England where we've seen uh, water running down the streets, plenty of flashes of lightning as well. And it's just interesting how things can turn around. Now, I'm not saying for a second that all of a sudden the drought's over and uh, we're turning the other way, but it's amazing how, when you look at the grand scheme of things, the amount of uh, media coverage about uh, drying up rivers uh, and whatnot, um, how, you know, talk of semi-permanent droughts in, in parts of America and that is uh, is simply not taking place and I think even with regards to uh, our side of the world in in Europe I think it's going to be interesting how um you know just just basically back last last year a year ago we were talking about uh, f damaging floods record breaking floods in parts of Germany the low countries um, even parts of the UK had uh, tremendous rainfall back in, in, in February, but an overall longer term dry pattern that has been very much caused, I believe, by La Nina. And of course, the question is, La Nina is typically bring cooling to Earth's temperature, but we're actually seeing the temperature continuing to rise somewhat. But I think the amount of, of uh drier than normal conditions um, produced by the La Nina um, along with uh, increasingly warming waters within our northern ocean basins attributed to the widespread heat waves across the northern hemisphere but there is a counterbalance to that we're seeing strong cooling over the western Indian Ocean we continue to see that cold water extend from almost uh, the, the western portion of the Pacific all the way back to South America and um, even some cooling waters over the north, the, the, the South Atlantic here. And that has led to uh, below normal temperatures further south. So, of course, where the waters are extremely warm, continents adjacent to that has seen uh, a very warm year to date. And, of course, when you look at the, the current temperature profile for today, as we always uh, like to do on the Global Weather and Climate Report, this is the situation today. So the tropics are exactly average. The, the global temperature is 0 0.2 Celsius above, 0 0.7 above in the northern hemisphere, counteracted with a minus 0 0.4 in the southern hemisphere. And that has been a mainstay this year, really, that the southern hemisphere has been generally below normal temperature-wise here. So um, there is balance. Um, this is a very interesting one. See the Arctic... Um, this has been constantly in the kind of 0 0.5 to 1.5 above normal temperature-wise. The Antarctic has been 0 0.3 Celsius below normal. So we're getting this kind of balance, so to speak, between, you know, we're, we're reaching the peak of the summer across the Northern Hemisphere. Ocean temperatures are, are far above normal. Therefore, there's no surprise that we're seeing warmer than normal temperatures. But of course, uh, equ the equatorial region has been kind of bouncing between slightly above and slightly below and then of course there has been I think anyway a considerable below normal across um, the southern hemisphere where of course you've got a lot more water within the southern hemisphere less land mass uh, than in the northern hemisphere and um, uh, so yeah it's and of course when you dry out soils over parts of North America Europe and indeed Asia, we see temperatures uh, warmer than normal. Um, there's no, it's not rocket science really. Very interesting how persistent the cool has been across parts of Iran into uh, Pakistan, India uh, over recent times. It's very, very interesting how consistent that, that cool is 
uh, quite a large area in north and northeast China, in the Mongolia, and southern portions of Russia has cooled considerably. But of course, we do have a very, very warm Europe, uh, northern portions of Africa um, above normal. The consistency in central and even southern portions of Africa in terms of cold than normal has been quite interesting. Now, I say the, 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 the thing that's interesting about the Arctic in particular, this is an interesting tweet here by Robert Rode. Is that how you pronounce that? I'm not sure. Um, he is a, a firm um, global warming person, um, strongly believes that uh, you know carbon dioxide is the primary driving mechanism to Earth's warming at the moment here. So he puts out this very interesting tweet, interesting in terms of wording as well, because he says, Retre retreating Arctic sea ice has reopened the northern sea route through the Arctic Ocean for the 2022 season. This date is similar to 2021, but much later than 2020. As a reminder, prior to 2005, most years never had a full open water passes through the Arctic. So it certainly sounds rather doomsday stuff that's for sure but in another tweet here below it says here and you can see the map here representing the arctic sea ice and it says here a map of the current arctic sea ice conditions showing the open water passage along the russian coast for this date 2022 is the 15th and i'll repeat this the 15th lowest arctic sea ice extent on record this is lower than every year in the 1980s and the 1990s, but more extensive than any year in the last decade. So in a, in a sense, what's your point? We know that the Arctic sea ice is reducing, um, but it's he's, he's almost contradicting his own, the own point, his own point in the tweet, because it says the 15th lowest uh, on record. So there's been 15 years where it's been lower than this so far. So that's quite interesting. And when you look at this here, it's actually quite surprising because the Arctic, like I say, has generally been plus, you know, plus 0 0.5 Celsius or plus 1.5 Celsius above normal pretty much all summer long. So you think to yourself, really, it, we're, we're in pretty good state. The Arctic sea ice extent is, is in pretty good state considering the fact that we've had such a warm northern hemisphere summer but you kind of say to yourself robert where's the point in in your in in the tweet that you're putting out good friend here david birch um he put out an interesting tweet as well and he continues to put out great tweets i do encourage you if you don't already follow david on twitter please do so i, I do like to point some of these guys out that put out some tremendous tweets lots of great information and accurate accurate Factual information is what I really, really strive for here on this channel. So I do encourage you, um, you know, to, to keep checking these videos out because it's going to get more interesting as we go through the autumn season and on into the winter. But David actually goes on to say, and this has been an ongoing thing throughout the summer, another contradiction, if you will, to the doomsday stories that we're seeing on our news headlines. But Green, Greenland's surface mass budget is 400 gigatons above the 2011-12 season and a 75 gigaton above the mean uh, 1981 to 2010 average here. So we're building the uh, ice cap over Greenland, essentially. We're increasing its mass budget. So again, despite the, the heat that we're seeing in parts of, of, of Asia, North America and Europe, you know, we are still seeing you know, you know, cold um, around the planet. I think certainly the media would like to suggest anyway that, you know, that the earth is, is drying up, heating up, and, uh, you know, cold is going to be a thing of the past. That there's, You know, it couldn't be further from the truth, actually. And I think uh, we need to find balance, uh, so to speak, here. This is the global temperature anomaly of weather.com. Um, for for the planet, so of course we've got plenty of cool across parts of Africa. Like I say, uh, northwest India, into Pakistan, Iran. Can't remember what some of these countries here are. <laughs> my, my geography sometimes can be a little bit iffy. 
I do apologise for that. Plenty of warmth over Europe, if you notice. Kazakhstan, Mongolia, a good chunk of central portions of Russia is below normal. This is a whole month of August as well, remember. Alaska's had a fairly cool, cool uh, August. We've got the, you know, the southwest, parts of the interior southwest below normal, the Midwest, and as I say, Texas, one of those places that has been really dry and, and really hot this summer. We're starting to see that pattern turn around. And of course, remember, we've seen flooding across the London area uh, just a week ago also. Looking at the, uh, I, I, I strongly believe the Man Julian Oscillation, another big contributing factor to the type of uh, summer that we've had uh, across many parts of the continent, large-scale sinking, dry ground, and warm water surrounding the continents, all a contributing factor to the amount of heat that we've seen. Now, China is another one of those places where um, you know, we've seen this unprecedented drought, heat, and whatnot, worse uh, than anything seen in anybody's lifetime. It is just the worst ever. Yeah, okay, well, you know, believe what you want to believe, uh, but certainly I, I do not believe that, you know, this is the worst um, that we've ever seen on planet Earth. Probably, if you want to put, you know, the worst in our lifetime, yeah, I can understand that, but certainly not in terms of the millions of years that Earth's planet has been around, that this is just the worst ever. I just don't believe that. But certainly, man Julian Oscillation, like I say, driven by sea surface temperatures and the anomalies. We've had large-scale sinking across parts of eastern portions of Asia, North America, and indeed Europe. Now, this is the thing that we need to watch here. I think the amount of heat and warm water over the northern basins has led to a disconnect it has led to uh, you know a, a shift in wind uh, direction and patterns between the tropics and the mid latitudes. We've had uh, drier uh, across the mid, uh, the, you know, the central portion of the tropical Atlantic and whatnot. That has suppressed development. It's been you know the weakest start to an Atlantic hurricane season since 1992, and um, I do think that we are going to start to see a change taking place. There is. A lot of uncertainty when it comes to uh, the type of um, the, you know the type of, of, of setup that we get towards the, the month of September, and uh, it'll be something that we need to keep a very close eye on, indeed, as we go forward here. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back in the next couple of days with more. Bye for now.